Hi, my name is Barry Ragland English, and today I will be speaking to you about some fundamentals of remote sensing in NASA EO fleets. By the end of this training, you will be able to form an understanding, define, and describe remote sensing, geospatial analysis, and its benefits in NASA ESO fleets, Landsat, and MODIS. What is remote sensing and spatial analysis? Remote sensing is the science of identifying, observing, and measuring an object without coming into direct contact with it. Satellites serve as a great vantage point for observing the Earth remotely. Geospatial analysis is the method of gathering information about certain geographical locations using satellite imagery and data sources to examine change on Earth. So you might ask what are the benefits of using remote sensing data and geospectral analysis? Some of the benefits include observing and characterizing the Earth's surface from your computer, being able to collect information over large spatial areas and across time, monitoring and understanding change over the years. Using satellite data can be integrated in the situ measurement for a holistic understanding of our environment. It also provides you the opportunity to visualize your results in a multitude of ways through mapping data points, data plots, heat maps, and more. And finally, NASA's Earth Observing Data is, free and open, is a free and open resource to everybody. Now I'll be talking about electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic energy produced by the vibration of charged particles travels in the form of waves through the atmosphere and the vacuum of space. These waves have different wavelengths. The wavelengths are the distance from the wave crest to wave crest and frequencies. A shorter wavelength means a higher frequency. Some, like radios, microwaves, and infrared waves have longer wavelengths, while others, such as ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays have much shorter wavelengths. Visible light sits in the middle of the range of the long short wave radiation. This small portion of energy is all that the human eye is able to detect. Instrumentation is needed to detect all other forms of electromagnetic energy. NASA instrumentation utilizes the full range of spectrum to explore and understand processes occurring here on Earth and other planetary bodies. Most importantly, the primary source of energy observed by the satellites is the sun. Now I will be talking a little bit more about the sensors up in Earth. Sensors or instruments on board satellites and aircraft use the sun as a source of illumination to provide their own source of illumination. Basically, that means that they're measuring the energy that is reflected back to them. There are two forms of sensors. There's passive sensors and active sensors. Passive sensors use natural light, use natural energy from the sun. Active sensors use, provide their own source of energy. Now I will talk a little bit more about the role of resolution. Another concept is resolution. Resolution plays a role in how data from a sensor can be used. Depending on the satellite's orbit, and sensor design, res resolution can vary. There are four types of resolutions to consider for any data set. Radiometric, spatial, spectral, and temporal. Radiometric resolution is the amount of information in each pixel. Each pixel. For example, the number of bits representing the energy recorded. Spatial resolution is defined by the size each pixel within a digital image and area on the surface Air on the Earth's surface represented by that pixel. Spectral resolution is the ability of a sensor to disconcern finer wavelengths that is more or a narrow band. Temporal resolution is the time it takes for a satellite to complete an orbit and revisit the same observation area. Now I will go into NASA Earth's observing fleets. NASA's Earth Division has a fleet of satellites monitoring our Earth. These provide a, a wide variety of data sets that are found on NASA's data pathfinders. Depending on what type of environmental analysis you would like to conduct, it would be beneficial for you to understand which satellites better suit the type of information you are researching while conducting Earth's observations. 
For example, if you like to study urban heat and measure the rates it, in which surface temperatures affect urban communities, you would like to look into Landsat and MODIS data, satellite data, because they provide more accurate information in collecting urban communities and both to do pre a precise job in land coverage and af air afrospheric data. Moreover, RSET provides great basic introductory training webinars on the major satellites using geospatial and remote sensing analysis. Now I will talk about what is Landsat. Landsat is a series of satellites provided that provide the longest continuous space-based record on Earth's landing existence. So the satellite has been up in space since 1972 and it's currently up there. Currently, Landsat 7, which launched in 1999, and Landsat 8, launched in 2013, are collecting 30 meters of multispectral data on the entire Earth's surface every 16 days. So you might wonder how you can use Landsat data, and basically Landsat data informs decisions in many disciplines, especially human health, ag agriculture, climate, energy, fire, natural disasters, urban growth, water management, ecosystems, and biodiversity, and forest management. Another helpful instrument that is on two satellites is MODIS. MODIS collects data supporting four discipline groups, atmosphere, calibration, land cover, land surface temperature, vegetation, land cover, albedo, wildfires, and ocean. MODIS datasets are some of the most widely used as they provide daily measurements of the entire globe. However, while their temporal resolution is fine, their spatial resolution is coarse, ranging between 250 meters to 1 kilometer, depending on the data product. Like Landsat, MODIS can collect information on urban areas as, and is a popular source of retrieving data on surface temperature and more. Where in the world? This image is an example of some of the Earth observation data NASA collects. It was taken on October 22nd and shows the active fires and burn scars from recent wildfires in California and Colorado. I hope you learned a lot more about Earth observations to kickstart your knowledge on studying how remote sensing and geospatial analysis can make a significant impact in making this world a better place to live in.